am especially pleased with the results of the new demonstration method. Next time you're in town, give me a ring and I'll sail for the best lunch you ever had. Kindest regards, sincerely. Got it? Well, I guess that does it for today. Fine. I can still catch the early bus. Good night. Good night. Button speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Carter. No, I hadn't thought about doing anything about that until uh, oh, sometime next week. Well, I suppose I could if it's necessary. Hold the phone, will you? Carol, are you still there? Yes, sir. Uh, come back in, please. Yes? Would you mind staying a while and helping me with a little work? Mr. Carter wants a sales analysis in the morning. Well, sure, I can stay. Get your book. Mm-hmm. Hello, Carter. Uh, I caught my girl just in time. We'll get right at it. I'll have it in your office before noon tomorrow. No, 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 that's perfectly all right. I haven't got anything to do anyway. Okay. Kindly let me know, and I'll give you more information. Sincerely. Well, that does it. I guess we've earned our merit badges for tonight. Thanks for staying. Oh, you're welcome. And now again, good night. Good night. Hey. Wait a minute, I just realized it's 10 o'clock and neither of us have had any dinner. Why don't you let me feed you and me and then I'll drive you home. That sounds fine. Give me a moment to powder my shiny nose. Sure please. thing. Yell when you're ready. And Carter said, Benton, I've been listening to you yap about your ideas long enough. Mahaffey's moving to Memphis and that leaves the sales manager's job open. You're going to get it and brother, you better be good. So that's how I became sales manager. And you have, haven't you? Have what? Been good. Well, the way business has been the last three years, everybody's been good. Oh, come on now. I know how hard you work. How many evenings you spend at the office alone, how many plans and gimmicks you cook up. You're married to your job. Well, yes, uh, kind of, I guess. Anyway, it helps to fill time. You'll be in there punching at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'd better be getting home. Oh, sure. Carol's been a wonderful evening. I haven't talked and laughed so much in a long time. It has been fun, hasn't it? You were sweet to think of it. Can we do it again sometime? Why, sure, sometime. Good. I had to come to town anyway, Benton, mm. but I do have something to discuss with you. About Anne, of course. Some new drugs. We've just started to use them, but they've been trying them at other mental institutions for some time with some interesting results. The percentage of success isn't high, but where they've worked best is in cases like your wife's, where there's been temporary response to other treatments. Oh, I don't know, Doctor. To a girl like Anne, these temporary interludes of sanity must be absolute torture. To come back to the world for a few hours, a few days, knowing that any minute she'll have to go back to wherever she goes back, seems rather cruel to me. Well, in a way, you're right. But on the other hand, these people, and as far as you're concerned, deserve every possible chance. When you weigh the brief unhappiness you're talking about against the possibility of permanent recovery, it doesn't seem to me to be anything but a good gamble. And do you feel if these new drugs are effective, the recovery might be permanent? I feel this strongly about it. There is a chance. You should take it. But if these drugs don't work, I think you must change your life. Change my life? In what way? Well, I'm afraid this is about our last hope. If we're not successful this time, I don't think you should expect much for the future for Anne. Oh, that's terrible. I know it is, but after five years, insanity becomes grounds for divorce in this state, and there should be mercy on both sides in a situation like this. And you advise it? I do. All right, Doctor, go ahead. And thank you for being so frank about it. As I say, this will take probably six months. And I suggest you limit your visits during the treatments. Of course. And don't get your hopes too high. Thank you, Doctor. Excuse me, I didn't know you were busy. That's all right, young lady. I'm just leaving. Goodbye, Benton. You will hear from me when I have something to report. Goodbye. Bye, Doctor. Would you like to go to the file on the Roberts contract now? No, I don't think so. Let's do it later. You seem worried. Well, I guess I got a couple little things on my mind. Anything that can be improved by fretting over it? No, no, I guess not. Can I help? 
Believe me, Carol, you helped just by being here. I'll give her the contracts. Might as well look at them. Sit down. Two sugar. Two sugar, right. You learn quickly. Well, you take coffee at the office, too, you know. Yes, I guess that's so. But you might let me keep my flattering illusions. I don't think you're the kind of man that needs any illusions. That's flattering, huh? Thank you, ma'am. Speaking of illusions, delusions or other forms of sleight of hand, I I didn't really fool you into believing we had to work tonight, did I? No. I could have asked you to dinner without all the hugger mugger. Yes. I'm glad. I really wanted to ever since the last time. You uh sort of make me feel alive again. I'm glad. You know about my wife? Yes. I suppose everybody in the office knows about it. Yes, but nobody gossips about it. People respect you too much. They admire your integrity and loyalty. I feel the same way. It's a strange situation. I'm married. Still not married. And then, well, it's nothing I should inflict on you. Pretty deluxe, aren't we? After all, this is a very special occasion. A, you're going off on your vacation in 48 hours. And B, I've been waiting through six months of those catch as you catch can after work dinners to take you out on a real date. Wonderful six months. To the world's best secretary and her vacation. I guess I can legitimately drink to the last half. Now I think it's time for another first. Would you care to dance? Love to. Carol, I could hold you in my arms like this forever. Oh, Philip. Philip. You're going to be gone two weeks. It's going to seem like two lifetimes. Please, Philip, don't. Oh, I know I haven't the right to tell you what I want to tell you, but... Philip, you know you're more than just a boss to me. Let's wait till after my vacation before we try to make any decision. All right. It's going to be an awful long two weeks. Two. Carol, don't you let that go. A girl who's leaving on vacation tomorrow must have a million things to do. Why don't you take the rest of the afternoon off? Thanks. Maybe I will leave pretty soon, but I want to get this straightened out so that Mary won't have any trouble finding things while I'm away. You've already told her six times. We won't have any trouble. Oh, well, never mind. I'll get it. Benton speaking. Dr. Forbes. Yes, Benton Forbes. With some news for you, some very good news. Is that so? What is it? Well, uh, my hopes for the result of the new drug we discussed has been fulfilled. I might even say surpassed. Well, what does that mean? It means that your wife is well enough to come home. Come home? Doctor, you mean she's... Yes, Benton, well. Ready to pick up her life where she left it five years ago. Doctor, are you sure this isn't just another false alarm? These drugs she's been taking, if she stops using them, won't she slip back? No, this is no false alarm, Benton. In fact, I deliberately withheld the news from you until I could be as sure of your wife as well as I am of you, for instance. I see. Oh, there'll be moments of, say, uncertainty, maybe a little vagueness for a time. But uh, what she really needs from here on is a feeling that she's loved and needed. This is something that only you can give her. Well, that's wonderful, Doctor. What do I do now? Why, come and get her, boy. Take her home. Tomorrow after lunch will be fine. That'll uh, allow you to get her home so that she can rest a little before dinner. All right, Doctor, thanks. I'll be there right after lunch. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello, Ben. 
Clayton. Hello. Glad to see you. Hello, Doc. Thank you. Uh, where's Ann? Uh, she'll be here in a moment. Fine. How's she feel? She feels fine. Well, naturally, she's a little nervous over all this, leaving here, going home, seeing you. It's a big move after five years. I can understand that. I'm a little nervous myself. Well, that's natural, too. But take it easy. Give her time to adjust, and everything will be all right. Hello, Philip. Anne, dear. I want you both to know that this is one of the most rewarding moments of my life. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Forbes, oh, it's silly of me to try to thank you. There's just no words for it. Seeing you walk out of here well is all the thanks I need, Anne. Oh, Miss Hunt, uh, have you the medication I want Mrs. Benton to take with her? It's in the pharmacy, Doctor. I've sent Mrs. Benton's other bags out to the car. Oh, come along, Miss Hunt. I'll get the things from the pharmacy. It's, uh, it's wonderful you're coming home, Anne. It'd be wonderful to be home. I think you're looking well. Thank you. So do you. A little thinner, maybe. Shall we go home? Well, here we are. Yes. Welcome home, Anne. Thank you. Home. It's going to take me a little while to get used to this. I'd like to fix my face. Certainly. More coffee? Uh, no, thank you. That was a wonderful dinner, Philip. You've become very good in the kitchen. And by the way, do you like what I did in the kitchen? That new asphalt tile instead of uh, that old linoleum? Then it is different. It's considerably different. After you uh, went away, I did several things around the house I thought maybe you'd like. The new tile, metal cabinets in the kitchen, flagstone walk in front of the house, a lot of things. Thank you. I was afraid I'd forgotten. <laughs> oh, Anne, dear, there probably are many things you have forgotten. One can't be expected to remember every detail about a house after five years. Well, I do remember lots of things. I, I remember exactly how the kitchen looked now. You know, even... Uh, even that little rusty spot on the old sink that I never could bleach out. I finally gave up on that one and got a new one. Thank you. Philip, would you mind if I went up to bed now? I'm, I'm kind of tired. It's been quite a day. Oh, of course it has. Now you run along. I'll stay down here and read a little while. Be up in a few minutes. I promise to be very quiet when I come up. Good night. Good night. Carol, I don't suppose I should have called, but I just realized you were leaving on your vacation in a couple of hours, and I wanted to say goodbye. I'm glad you called, Philip. I wanted to say goodbye, too. There's something else I'd rather say it than write it. Yes? For a long time now, my sister's been after me to come down and live with her in Washington. I've decided it's a good idea, so I won't be coming back. Well, what about the office, your job? My two weeks vacation will have to be my notice. I won't be leaving you in the lurch. Mary's trained to take over my job. That's all right, Carol, but uh, I'll miss you. I'll miss you, too. Then this is goodbye for good? Yes. Well, I suppose it is better that way. Yes, it's, it's better. Goodbye, Philip. Goodbye, Carol.
And uh, you want to sleep? No, but I didn't want you to think you had to talk to me. I don't have to talk to you. I'm glad you're here to talk to. Philip, I know this hasn't been easy for you. I've been away such a long time. You must have made a whole new life for yourself without me. Now, all of a sudden, here I am, a terrible responsibility. You're not a terrible responsibility. You're my wife, and I'm glad you're well again. You're being very dear and gentle about it, but it's as if we were talking through a pane of glass. You're here, and I'm here, but we're not together. That's only natural, dear. You can't bridge five years in a couple of hours. You mustn't worry about it. Give yourself a little time. Don't even think about it. I can't seem to stop thinking. Or what I have to call thinking. It's a pretty disorganized process. But I suppose that's natural for someone who's been... No, no. You must stop that. There's no point in harboring that thought. It's all in the past. But it, it's like my mind was a telephone switchboard with some of the plugs pulled out. There's so many things I want to remember about our life together, and I just can't. Then you must let me help you without feeling strange about it. If there are blanks, let me fill them in for you. You do want to help me, don't you, Philip? In every way I can. Look, dear, let's take a little trip together. I haven't had a vacation in a couple of years. Let's just go away and loaf and relax and get used to each other all over again. Where would we go? Oh, New England, maybe. Yes, New England. I've always wanted to go to New England. It must be lovely at this time of the year. Yes, I think I'd... Philip, have I been to New England? Mm-hmm. On our honeymoon. Oh, I'm sorry. So many things. Would you forgive me? Of course I'll forgive you. You get a good night's sleep. We'll leave the first thing in the morning. Okay. okay. Well, this here room's number six. Same one you said you had when you was here before. Now, I could say that I remember, you understand? But the truth is, I ain't got no memory for you at all. We get a passel of honeymooners here in the course of about seven years, and they all look alike to me. Girls are giggling and a blushing, young fellas moving around like a lot of sick calves. Yeah, they all look alike to me. Uh, I guess you're right, Mr. Baldwin. Fact of the matter is, I don't set much store in this honeymooning. Now, sir, the day Ms. Morland and me was married, I brought her here directly from the church. And I says to her when I got her in the kitchen, I says, Ms. Morland, you cook supper. Did she? The fact of the matter is, she didn't. I did. Mm. But that ain't got nothing to do with the principal. No. Now, if you want anything, just holler or come get yourself. That'd suit me better. Well, thanks very much. We'll try not to cause any trouble. Well, that'll be something new. Miss Benton, fix supper. <laughs> Philip, was he really here before? Oh, sure. He came with the original blueprints. Boy, I must have been crazy to forget him. I'm beginning to remember more and more about it. Even a little, a little about Mr. Moreland. But I'd like to know everything about it. Would you tell me? Well, I guess all the honeymoons are supposed to be the best in the world. At least ours was. Well, where do we go? I mean, besides here. Well, on the countryside, mostly. You bought a lot of things at auctions. Oh, that little pewter teapot we have on the sideboard at home. Some sketches. Oh, I remember. You said you didn't know whether you could afford to keep me because I was so extravagant. <laughs> but I didn't mind. I knew you were just joking. And I was so sure you loved me. Actually, I was quite pleased when you wanted things. It gave me a little chance to show you how much I loved you. I loved you very much. You loved me? I... Miss Moreland said this is on the house. Oh, thank you. And thank Mrs. Moreland. I don't know whether I will or not. She keeps on giving drinks away like this. We're going to go broke. Did you get the lobster? Certainly I got the lobster. Now, you go over there by the window and sit down and keep your shirt on. Mrs. Moreland will have supper ready just as soon as I cook it. You're very kind. I know, but I can't help it. <laughs> Sorry. Remember the trip to New York? We saw some shows. Empire State Building. 
Radio City Musical. That's right. And because you wanted to, we toured through Vermont. Visited a marble quarry, saw a vineyard, and several days later found this silly, happy little place. Oh, I remember Vermont. All those wide roads that were so smooth. I sort of remember coming here. Didn't we... Didn't we just stop to have a drink and, and watch the sunset and then we stayed? That's right. And everything about our marriage seemed to fall into place. Right here. What do you mean, fell into place? All of a sudden, I felt that we were really together. Marriage is so much more than making love, having meals together, being called Mr. and Mrs. There's a kind of a oneness, for want of a better word. With it, there's ease, peace, understanding, and the wonderful, enormous sharing of everything, the good and the bad. Marriage really becomes marriage when you realize that that feeling has come into being. There's nothing quite like it. And once you've got it, you better hang on to it. What was it that gave it to you so suddenly? Well, I don't think there was any one thing in particular. Maybe there was. I remember we were sitting here, and you were watching the sunset like you'd never seen one before. Your face was like a little girl's on Christmas morning. And you acted as if I'd done the whole thing for you myself. You said... I said, thank you, Philip. Can we watch the sunsets together always? That's what I said. I remember. That's right. And I made you a promise. I promised we would always. Do you remember that? Yes. But, Philip, that's not a promise you have to keep now. I don't know how you feel, but it seems to me that when someone's been away for five years, all promises are just automatically canceled. And, dear, because we've been apart, we've both been away in a sense. A while ago, when I heard you laugh, suddenly all the time disappeared. I knew you were back. And I knew I was, too. Where you've been, I... Oh, I know it was frightening and terrible. Where I've been, I've seen discouragement, loneliness. Sometimes everything seemed quite futile. But I also saw courage, honor, and beauty, too. the sunsets together. I love you, Anne. I love you, Phil. I don't think I'll cry anymore, ever. Mm -hmm. 